February is LGBT History Month. Now, what a month it was last year. All sorts of goings on in Scottish schools were unearthed. Uh, we looked at the disgusting drag act invited to Dunbar Grammar School. I went along to watch other drag acts performing there. I was ejected by the police. But Flo Job, the vulgar drag artist performing for Primary One children. We had messages from pupils who are fed up with LGBT History Month, feeling they were pressurised into supporting things. We had messages from parents, messages from teachers. They were pretty fed up with the indoctrination as well. We had stories of schools posting extremely sensitive person, personal information about pupils' gender identity and sexuality on the internet with their names and photographs. And we had Renfrew High School, who had a poster display up in a corridor, including the sign for polyamorous relationships, relationships sexual relationships with more than two people. Uh, we came across the absolute filth on the website of Jebber Grammar School. So, here we are again, 2021. LGBT History Month. Just to say, if you come across anything, any stories this time, do let us know. We'd be fascinated to hear about it. So where did it all start? LGBT History Month being celebrated in a very large proportion of schools in Scotland. Well, a few years ago now, the Thai campaign pressed for LGBT inclusive education. And they were pushing as an open door because every MSP in the Scottish Parliament, every party in the Scottish Parliament just seemed to be behind it, certainly not speaking up against it, and it was accepted completely. This is a little clip of the so-called debate about the time for inclusive education, and the MSPs just queue up to say how wonderful they think the whole thing is. Just watch this. On motion 3945 in the name of Monica Lennon, on time for inclusive education, the Thai campaign. I absolutely love it. And I want to end by paying tribute to the Thai campaign. To no, I want to thank Monica Lennon for her uh, lovely speech, uh, and I'm hugely supportive. It has been a privilege to witness their drive and vision firsthand. Presiding officer, sometimes there comes a campaign which symbolises the very essence of what the Scottish Parliament was actually designed for. And it's a privilege to take part in a high-quality debate that should... The Thai campaign are leading with courage. I'd also like to thank Jordan and Liam. I'm very pleased and proud to have put my name to their pledge. The Thai campaign is doing an amazing job. So I want to reiterate this government's support for the aims of the campaign. So that's what the MSPs think. What does the Scottish population think? We wondered. Well, instead of just wondering, we found out. We paid for a professional opinion poll to be taken our last summer to see the public's opinion on some of these things. This is what we found. Right, primary and secondary schools have special events and assemblies for LGBT History Month. 40% of the population thought that was appropriate. 36% thought it's not. So roughly, so sort of not far off 50-50. Uh, most people running schools in Scotland and the government, they regard it's that just everyone should be approved of that and it's just perfectly normal and uncontroversial to do that within a school. But it's actually about 50-50 in the population. Okay, next thing. The LGBT rainbow flag is flown by primary and secondary schools. Who thinks that appro that's appropriate? 37%. What percent think it's inappropriate? 35 Again, about an even split. How many schools even have the slightest qualm before running up the rainbow flag in their playground? I would say virtually none. They just assume that that's something entirely uncontroversial, that they can just go ahead with doing without any fear of controversy at all. Whereas actually, only about half of the population agrees with them. Uh, drag queens taking part in story times and reading to primary school children. Now, John Swinney, after the flow job debacle, he made it quite clear. He thought drag queens going into primary schools was a good thing. It's just that, that particular school had chosen the wrong one. Right, what percentage of the public agree with him? 25%. What percentage outright disagree with him? 53%. 53%. So a very, very substantial majority says the SNP's policy on this is wrong, but they just ignore it completely and carry on the way that they're going. Right, next question we asked about. Five to eight-year-olds. Should five to eight-year-olds be taught about the following kinds of relationship? First of all, should they be taught about heterosexual relationships at age five to eight? 66% said yes, 32% said no. Now, I would say at that age, 
my idea of teaching about um, heterosexual relationships would be boy and girl fall in love, get married, have kids, and live happily ever after. That's sex education for six-year-olds. Uh, but e even any mention of it at all, 32% of the population think it's a bit young. Right, next thing, homosexual relationships. What percentage think that's appropriate? 47. What percentage think it's inappropriate? 50%. So we got roughly an even split. Half think it's appropriate, half think it's not. The Scottish government says schools have to teach children about this at this age, and you, you've just got to do it. So the 50% who disagree, who cares about them? Everything is based on the opinion of the, like the liberal half of the population, if you like. Right, next one, bisexual relationships, lessons for five to eight-year-olds. 43% uh, think that's appropriate. 53% think it's inappropriate. So here we've got a clear majority saying they think this is not what should be happening in primary schools. Five to eight-year-olds should not be learning about bisexuality. John Swinney and the SNP, though, overrule them and say, well, they're going to in any case. And here is a slide from a lesson plan for five to eight-year-olds, lesson plan produced on behalf of the Scottish government recommended by John Swinney. Well, what else do we have in LGBT History Month? A lot of schools have displays of LGBT icons, in other words, heroes of the gay rights cause. And these little posters of heroes include current politicians. So schools have little posters up saying, you know, Mary Black, hero, Patrick Harvey, icon, LGBT icon. So they're promoting current politicians as heroes to pupils. So a pupil could walk along the corridor, past the poster, saying that, you know, presenting Patrick Harvey as a role model and a hero figure. Then they could walk out of the door, along the road, and vote in an election. And if anyone can't see there's something not quite right with this, well, I don't know. Now, depressingly, 53% of Scots thought this was fine. I suspect if I had more opportunity to explain it to them, maybe they wouldn't have done. But anyway, even under, under these circumstances, 38% said that's not right. That's not appropriate. So again, a very substantial portion of the population saying there's something going wrong there. But they're completely ignored. Right, next thing. Children aged 5 to 8 are taught about artificial insemination and that sometimes babies are created when a man gives his sperm to the woman, she puts the sperm inside her vagina. If the sperm meets the egg, she can become pregnant. Now, you may say, what's this got to do with LGBT History Month? The reason this is there for five to eight-year-olds, given equal prominence with heterosexual sex as a way to make babies, the reason it's there is because right from nursery, they're taught that any and every combination of adults can be a family and can have children. So that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to relativize natural family life and place any and every other means of producing children with any and every combination of men and women on an equal footing. That's why it's there. Right, what percentage of the population thinks this is an appropriate message for five to eight-year-olds? 31%. What percent think it's inappropriate? 50%. So again, a very clear balance of opinion among the Scottish population that this is wrong. That shouldn't be happening in primary schools. Right, last thing. Children aged 12 to 15 are taught that sex involving penetrating the anus is a sexual activity that both women and men engage in. What percentage thought that was appropriate for 12 to 15 year olds? 33. Inappropriate? 43. Again, a clear majority against that. But they're completely dismissed. Because the SNP thinks, oh, they're going to vote for us in any case. Who cares what they think? We'll just go with the opinions of the liberal third or a half of the population. So you can see from our opinion poll, there is clearly a serious disconnect. About half of the people roughly might be on the government's wavelength on most things, about half of them are definitely not. When it comes to the media, you've got the same issue. The, the more conservative half of the population are virtually completely unrepresented in the media. And within the government, they are, I would say, completely unrepresented. Look at the Thai campaign debates. Not a single MSP would stand up and give an alternative view. I've never heard any MSP question any of these uh, issues. Um, LGBT History Month, etc. So, we did our opinion poll, we did a press release, and we sent it to all the newspapers, 
nothing. No reply, no one interested. People say, oh, what about the Daily Mail, the Daily Express? Surely they'd be interested. No, absolutely nothing. All the TV stations, no response. The Times Educational Supplement, a publication devoted entirely to Scottish educational issues, no response at all. No coverage. Uh, if you look at what they are covering, they've got a story in at the moment about a primary school buying teddies for their pupils during lockdown. I sent it to the General Teaching Council for Scotland's magazine. Obviously not expecting they were going to publish it because it doesn't fit their agenda. I also sent it to a few Christian campaigning organisations. Not even a single reply. Zero. Absolutely nothing. Now, I could have sent it to John Swinney, but really, why bother? I mean, whatever points I made in a letter, we ignore every single one of them, and the reply would be a cut-and-paste job. Equality and diversity is at the heart of all we do. The United Nations Convention of the Right of Child says that every child has the right to be respected. But what he's really thinking, what John Swinney and the SNP are really thinking, they're thinking, my, what a long way we have to go to educate our bigoted population. But what's crystal clear here is a big chunk of the electorate is unrepresented and it's going to stay that way as long as those people keep voting for the SNP, Labour, Lib Dems, Greens, Conservatives or a whole host of other parties who are just not interested in these issues. Now, if you think back to that clip of the MSP's so-called debating, what would it have taken to turn that into a real debate, to really open up the issue and make it be seen as a controversial stance that it really is. How many MSPs would it take? It would take one. That's all it takes to turn a flock of sheep into a debate. And that's our mission as the Scottish Family Party. If we can just get two or three or whatever MSPs in the Parliament, we could start debates in places where they currently are not happening, but they should be to reflect the views of the population of Scotland. Now, if you want to see that happening, you need to support us. And the best way to support us is by joining us via the link below. Thanks for watching.